What's up everybody? Today I want to show you how I tie my popping cork setups. Um, I used to tie them a lot different and I kept losing a lot of fish due to not having good knots and not slipping that type of thing. So what I did is I basically thought about the way I was tying um, it previously and I essentially took every knot that I had <laughs> prior on my setups and changed them all to polymer knots. And since then, everything's been great. Um, haven't snapped anything off, haven't had any knots slip, anything like that. So let's get started here. So basically what, um, what I'm gonna be doing today is just demonstrating how I tie my popping cork. So first things first, I use, um, for my popping corks, I usually use about 20 pound liter. So this is 20 pound monofilament. And what I'm going to do here is I've got just my cork, okay? My cork isn't connected to anything. Um, you know, basically it's just a cork in itself. So what I'm going to do, run my line through the eye of the Fairhope rattle. Bring it back around like so. And now I got this loop, okay? I got a loop on one side and then two tag ends on this side. So then I'm going to cross over. This is the polymer knot. If you know how to tie a polymer knot, that's all I'm doing right here. Boom. Then you got your little loop like so. Then I'm going to take the whole entire popping cork. And this is why you it's very important that you do this in this order. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to pop that through. Okay, so I got that popped through. Like so. And don't be afraid to leave yourself a, a decent amount of slack um, so you can pop that cork through that polymer knot pretty easily. So then I got my polymer, well, my pre polymer before it's tightened down. I'm gonna go ahead and wet it just a little bit and then I'm gonna go ahead and pull it together. I love polymer knots because they're just so strong and uh, I have not had a single issue ever with one coming undone on me or anything like that. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and trim my tag end. So now what I've got is a single Fairhope rattle or popping cork, and I've got a polymer knot on the end, on the bottom end, tied to um, 20 pound mono line. All right, so my next step is going to be to put my jig head on. I like to use jig heads on popping corks. Some people will just, you know, use um, a jig head, or not a jig head, I'm sorry, but um, a popping cork with um, just, you know, a hook and basically live bait on the end of it. All right, guys, so after I basically, I moved my camera a little bit because I'm running out of daylight here. So. Just to backtrack, I've got my popping cork, I've got my polymer knot connecting my 20 pound mono leader to the popping cork. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and tie one more polymer knot. I've got my jig head with a matrix shad or whatever desired plastic you use. I tend to use a lot of matrix shad. Um, also been using some um, some uh, unfair lures and um, some south side tackle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie that on with my polymer knot. Once I've got that on like so, pull that tight. And there we go. Now I've got my rig and I'll always pull from the popping quirk end to the J head and just make sure everything is real, real tight. Then what I'm gonna do, see how there's a tag in there, take my pliers, go ahead and remove that tag in. All right, so the very, 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 very last step in this whole entire process is going to be tying your popping cork rig that you just rigged up to your braided line 
Um, or to your main. Alright, so I've got my braided line, and I've got my popping cork set up with a matrix shad and a quarter ounce jig head, okay? So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this also, and once again, I'm going to tie a polymer knot on to the popping cork. Now, one thing that I think is very important when using a popping cork is doing direct braid to the actual cork itself. I used to tie a leader on um, with a surgeon's knot or a surgeon's loop, whatever, and uh, have a, a little bit of monofilament before uh, my popping cork. But I noticed that once I just switched to tying my braid straight to the um, popping cork that it was much more, um, as far as setting the hook, it was, it was much easier. You know, there's a lot less, um, give in the line and I just really liked that. And, um, that was actually introduced to me from the captain in Louisiana, Captain Jeremy. And, uh, ever since then, you know, I used to always be a big fan of, oh, well, they can see that, that braid. So I might as well use a leader, but um, as long as you're using a leader under your popping cord, you're good to go. So, a mono leader at least. Okay. Or, or, uh, fluorocarbon, whatever you want to use. Alright, so what I'm going to do is trim that off. And I've got my setup here. So what I've got is Fairhope Rattle, 20 pound leader, tied on by a polymer knot right here tied onto a golden eye matrix shad jig head quarter ounce with a polymer knot and then I have my popping cork tied with a polymer knot to the braid and that's it ladies and gentlemen very very basic setup caught many many fish on it um, anything from speckled trout to redfish um, a lot of species love this um, you know, Spanish, you can catch Spanish on popping corks. You can catch basically anything on popping corks. I caught a flounder once on a popping cork. Um, but yeah, so basically that seals it up. Um, thank you guys for watching. I just kind of wanted to show, um, a couple of, um, the different rigs that I use just because things have been extremely cold down here lately and <laughs> the fishing hasn't been super great. Um, and so I'm just trying to use my time wisely but thanks again for watching um if you haven't subscribed already hit that subscribe button and uh stay tuned for more thanks so much see ya